This is Twit. You know, Ed Bot was on um, Twit on the, over the weekend and was a little uh, baffled. This is not on your agenda, but I'm just going to bring it up anyway. A little baffled about this whole uh, new UI. What is it? Project? Oh, yeah. We're going to talk yep. about that. Are we? Part of our th the, yeah. The, the, yeah. Because. We talked about it a little last week. I know. And he yeah, said, Sun Valley. It, Sun Valley seems a little bit, I was going to call it Santa Fe, but that's where he lives. Sun Valley <laughs> is, seems a little off the cadence because it's fall 2021. One. I yep. feel like someone on the show might have talked about a, we'll call it a cadence change. Yeah. So that's yeah. what's going on, a change in cadence. It seems like it. Is it going to um, ripple its way back to the previews? Yeah. <laughs> so... As usual, Microsoft hasn't really communicated what is next for Windows. Like right now we get 20H2 rolling out, right? That's the thing that's in the manganese wave. And the next wave is called iron. The Mongoosian after, wave. <laughs> after the Mongoosian wave, we have iron. Not this kind of ironing, not that. No. You know. Iron. No, we're talking iron F-E. Iron F-E, baby. Yeah. So here's the thing. We're, we're starting to see feature releases in preview to the dev channel from the Iron Branch. The Iron Branch is something that's being built by the Windows engineering team between June this year and December this year. Like it's going to be done by December. And then next year they'll be adding cumulative updates and finessing it, polishing it. And then something we think could come out in the spring. <laughs> it's Maybe. like putting a seed in the ground and we'll see. I know. Right. So there were rumors, there were rumors I had reported that Microsoft might not do a 21 H1 release of Windows 10. What? I know. But now Zach Bowden over at Windows Central's hearing there will be one, but it's going to be a minor update. And if you remember our cadence, usually the past two years, the cadence has been Major update in the spring, minor update in the fall. Looks like we're going to reverse that next year. But uh, just by the way, sorry to interject, major. but just for, to sort of recap for the fans here, um, yeah. the Windows 10 release cycle has never been very stable anyway. No. Right? I mean, right. so we're in the fifth, I guess we're going into the sixth year of Windows 10 now. Yeah. Um, they have changed this up a bunch. And and tied to it, of course, sure. is the whole support life cycle, which varies between consumers yep. and businesses. It varies mm -hmm. between different SKUs of Windows 10. Yep. And so they've kind of adapted it over time. Um, I, I think that both of us agree that the situation we've had this year and last year is kind of an acceptable compromise between mm -hmm. Microsoft's very aggressive original goal to have two feature updates every year. Three. And Remember, our desire, it was three. Be three. Well, three originally, yeah. three, but they did. You know, they were doing two. They were trying to do that. Idea. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, maybe on more normalized schedule. So, if they were going, anyway, I'm sorry, but if you if they were going to do this and push out the next major release to uh, late 2021, I mean, yep. great. Great. Especially if it's something truly special. Although here's the problem, right? If you're an IT person, this kind of throws a monkey wrench into things, right? Because. <laughs> <laughs> The what yeah. IT a lot of IT people just ignore the spring release. They just skip over it. They they might have a few people in a test ring in their company on the big release in the spring, but they wait for the fall release because they think all the kinks have been ironed out by then, and that's the right. one that gets thirty months of support. So they all focus on the fall release. But what if next year the fall release is this new big bang release instead of like some minor thing that's been <laughs> really tested throughout the year? Are yep. you, as an IT department, like, yeah, let's bring it on. Give me the big release. No, you are not. So since we <laughs> literally have no idea what's going to happen, let's speculate, right? right? So I, I think there, there are two ways to look at this. One is they could push that 30-month of support uh, release out to the spring of 2022. Okay, easy enough. But maybe, maybe what we saw with the way that 20H2 was released, there's a little bit of a clue about how they might handle 21H2, meaning that 20, what is or will not be 21H1, a minor release, will form the basis of 21H2, and that the stuff that's put on top of it for consumers might be yeah. optional for businesses with long-term support. Right. 
Right. That goes with the original tip on Sun Valley, which Zach Bowden at Windows Central Mm -hmm. heard. It might be an optional UI thing that people could say, I want it or I don't want it. And that would fit in with your theory, right? There you go. Yeah. And and that makes sense for businesses because they might not want to have a new UI, especially if it only goes out to some of their users. It'd be training involved, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, correct. And the UI stuff, you know what I'm going to (laughs) say. Well, you know what? The, I mean, okay, what, so like rounded corners or something, and maybe I, some like <laughs> stuff moves into the be, from well, the control even panel. Even flatter. It's gonna. They're gonna we'll take okay, a steamroller to it. But there are two two big issues here. <laughs> One is fit and finish matters, right? Um, if Microsoft can make Windows 10 more consistent across the board, it will never be truly consistent, right? There's right. so much legacy uh, interface in there, but more consistent than it is today. I think we can all chalk that up as a win. But I also yeah. think you can look at stuff like what Apple did over the past year with Mac OS, with uh, Big Sur, and I guess with iOS, with uh, whatever it is, iOS 14, where, you know, it's it's the same basic UI, if, you know, but they prettied it up. It's just prettier, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, yeah. I would, I'd be happy with something like that, you know, and I think a lot of right. other people would be too. And the tip, the tip also of Sun Valley involves out of inbox apps also getting a refresh so that it's more consistent and looks Right. better with windows right so yeah you know if you're panos panay and you're running windows you care a lot about the ui stuff i mean he's a design you're guy, about the ui right? stuff yeah <laughs> yeah it's like for him it's all about the ui and the design right. and you know so for him that would be the main thing he would like to see cleaned up i would assume or one of the big things to make windows devices right. look better not just from a hardware standpoint but from a software standpoint right yeah. So, yeah. I, this is the dream. I mean, this is an, yeah. the realization of that Apple envy thing that Microsoft has had for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Where the software and the hardware are now being created by the same basic team of people, yeah. and maybe they can do something better as a result. 